What's up everyone, Wade Willis here, doing my playthrough of Umineko, and this is like my 15th part to uh, chapter 2. We're nearing the end of it, we have people kind of split up, and um, yeah, it's, it's actually about to get really crazy, I can tell. Um, we just had uh, Genji... Uh, just like one shot at a butterfly by just throwing his knife at it. <laughs> so uh, we're just really seeing how strong the servants are. And I'm, I'm kind of like excited to see how um, strong some of the other servants are. And I want to see like Genji actually go like full beast mode. Because uh, I don't think we've seen that. So um, yeah guys. And I'm just going to get into this. And I'm really excited for this part. Because um, it's really been building up a lot. So can we expect that three more of us will be gouged in the stomach, knee, and leg, and killed? Who will it be? I looked around the room, noticing that there were three people here, but... How should I put it? My emotions seemed paralyzed. Strangely, I didn't feel frightened. As I leaned against the sofa with the top part of my body, gazing up at the ceiling, Maria noticed. Apparently, she felt like I was slacking off of my riddle solving. She got mad at me for not taking it seriously enough. No. I'm sure the rich wrote in her letter that she'd give up on collecting interest or something abstract like that. I optimistically took that that she means she'd give up on killing the whole family. But it was really written in that what was but was it really written in that meaning? For some reason, I couldn't convince myself that solving the riddle would really save me. I feel like maybe, even if we solve it, we'll just be doing what the culprit wants, and it will be all wasted effort. Oh,そんなことはない。この日分が解けたら、ベアトの儀式はおしまいになる。だからもうそれ以上誰も死ななくなる。本当にか。そういうルールを奴が提示してるだけだろ。この謎を解けば。<笑> じいさまの確証黄金の在りかがわかるんだろ。やつはきっとそれを狙って。おお、狙わないよ。なんでそう断言できるんだよ。黄金は最初からペアトのものだもん。自分のものを狙ったりなんかしない。オッケー。面白い
だからこの謎を解けばちゃんと儀式は中断されるだってそれを約束違反したらリスクにならないこれを解けば奴は本当に約束を守るのか花は枯れるのにどうして美しいの浄化は見分けがつかないほど成功でもどうして美しくないの ?OK 人間は死を閉すから奇跡が起こせる不死の人間がいたとしてその人物に何の奇跡も起こせる道理はない私たちも人生も魔女も儀式も私たちはリスクを負わなければ何も成し遂げられないの謎が解けたらどうするんだピンポーンって鳴らして挙手して<笑>回答を魔女に伝えて答え合わせをするのか<笑> I'll lose this if this ends with ピンポーン<笑>ああそれは知らないでも解けばきっと自動的に儀式は終わる<笑>マリアは詳しいなそいつはみんなベアトリーチェに習ったのかおうん。So if you don't bear a risk, nothing can be gained, is that it? That definitely is the way of the world, but it's sort of in conflict with the chessboard thinking I like so much. At least when making moves in chess, players grope for the best move, always trying to avoid risk and hoping for an advantageous turn of events. They don't trust a chance like gambling. That's right, there's no room for gambling in an intellectual game. And yet, this person called Beatrice has、uh, created such an outrageous crime, or maybe a ceremony, while purposely imposing conditions for her own loss and announcing them to us. In chess, you always play for your best move. So, by putting yourself in your opponent's position, you can predict their next move. However, we can't be sure that Beatrice's moves are always in the best moves possible. <laughs> I thought she was probably making us focus on the epitaph to fool us in some way, speaking in riddles. But according to Maria, that alone was impossible. She said that this was genuine risk that the witch had taken, and therefore proof that this formal ceremony、uh, was a formal ceremony for magic. I can't understand this witch called Beatrice. If she's committing this chain of murders with some goal in mind, why does she go to the trouble of exposing the conditions for her defeat? No matter how I spin the chess board around and think from my opponent's perspective, I can't understand why she'd give up if this riddle is solved. Isn't it almost as though Beatrice doesn't care whether she wins or loses? Of course, chess board reasoning wouldn't work against an opponent like that. I don't understand. I don't understand. What is Beatrice after that's making her carry out this crime? If she just wanted to massacre all of us, she could have done it quietly without this whole crazy setup. There was no need for that kind hearted advance notice, all this self aware closed room stuff, or any of the rest. It's all overacting. I've got no clue what it means. Will I be unable to understand everything as long as I keep thinking of Beatrice as a greedy human culprit? If I don't accept her as a witch, will my chessboard thinking be stuck before I've even lined up the pieces? I would say so. If she really is a witch and everything Maria said is true, then there's only one thing for us to do. Theory building and discord and search for the culprit has all been pointless. We should have all gathered in Dining Hall comparing our knowledge to solve the riddle. By combining the knowledge that of that many people, we might have been able to grasp at least a thread of the answer. The greedy humans, each desiring to gain something over their opponents, were getting offered up as sacrifices one by one without gathering their knowledge together. In the end, Did the humans get what they deserved? They thought they were using their brains, but they were actually thinking only of their greedy selves. In the end, chessboard theory is a thinking technique where you project yourself on your opponent. So greedy people see their greedy selves inside their opponents. I looked lazily at Aunt Rosa. She was probably tired from being under all the tension of this whole time. She couldn't sleep, but she kept staring vaguely at some point off in space. Aunt Rosa announced that we couldn't trust anyone who hadn't been killed. Aunt Rosa's chessboard thinking saw herself inside her opponent. In other words, maybe Aunt Rosa was an isolated woman, unable to trust anyone and unable to let her guard down. Long ago, I think I heard a bit about it from my dad. Aunt Rosa was originally a very obedient child, but her age was, was too far separated from the other siblings, 
and they often made conflicting demands of her during their confrontations. Thanks to this, she'd undergone a lot of physiological harsh experiences in her youth. Often, when she copied one of her siblings, another sibling would give her a hard time. True, Aunt Rosa said many things today could be taken as abusive. But that means those words were once showered upon her, which is why they engraved in her vocabulary. The many abusive words that she'd spoken were also words that she'd been showered it with in the past. Now that I think about it, I've had the feeling that her style of speech sometimes has traces of Uncle Kraus and e or Aunt Ava in it. I'd understood it as them being similar because they were siblings, but maybe it wasn't just that. For the first time, I truly sympathized with Aunt Rosa, whom I'd always assumed was just quiet and gentle. <laughs> then what about Maria? Maria's been making a certain claim for a while now. If we could solve the riddle the witch displayed for us, the ceremony would be halted and will definitely be saved. And I think she also said that Beatrice will never break a promise. But this is Maria we're talking about. She herself never breaks promises, and she has the most innocent heart. So she believes Beatrice also wouldn't break her promises, so she's able to believe that. But isn't that just an image, image of Beatrice in Maria's mind? There's no proof that the real Beatrice always keeps her promises, right? Oh, she's coming out. Alright. Notice that isn't written in red. Again. Not in red. Okay. ルールyeah, but you don't know what rules she's following. She says she just follows rules. これだけめちゃくちゃやってきて。それでもルールだけは信じろってのかよ。わらわは田村かしはする。もちろん人も騙す。人間と変わらぬ。だが、約束として口にしたことを保護にしたことは一度もない。not in red. Humans never keep their promises.約束を守ろうなんてキャッチフレーズがある以上ちゃんと利口されてるかどうかは疑わしいなわらわから見れば人間の方がよっぽど利己的で芸道な存在よ人間の約束ほど疑わしいものはない I think all of us have experienced that ファラは時に人間と契約するが、くだらない願い一つ叶えるのに、どれほど厳重に取り決めをするか想像もつくまい。少しでも好きがあると、連中はすぐに叶える願いの数を百に増やせとか、小さな豆粒に変身してみろと
。しかもこんな残酷な方法で殺しておいて、何が無慈悲ではないだ約束は守るだといい加減なことを言うな俺はお前を認めない。ダンチそれを譲らないことだけが。お前への抵抗だと俺は。なるほど。永遠の災波であるのは、わらわに対しても同じであるというわけか<笑> ?I was surprised in, like, the la- in my last episode how he like broke. <笑>かもしれぬな。千年は長い。魔女の強さは、魔力より、我慢強さで決まるのかもしれんな。<笑>なるほど。ベルン教の恐ろしさもうなずける何をわけのわかんねえ話をぶつぶつ言ってやがれさっさと永遠の災難とやらを続けろ俺は千年でも一万年でも付き合う覚悟だぜ<笑>よいよい少しは戦う気力も戻ってきたようだな。そうでなければつまらない。I agree. ほら、対戦ゲームでもよくあるだろう。Although I would be surprised if for like eight whole chapters, it's just him fighting her if things are real or not. But maybe it will be. 相手があまりに弱くて拍子抜けで、わざと負けて最終ラウンドまで延長させて。最後に本気でフルボッコにすることとかってあるだろう<笑>たとえの意味がわかんねえよ。Of course you don't. ワインと同じよ。よく熟成させねば輝かぬ。お前はそれに耐えられるワインだ。She's kind of talking like, um... Oh, what's his name? Hisoka and Hunter Hunter. <laughs> わらわがじっくり熟成させてやる。So creepy. わらわの優雅な時間を彩る最高の美酒に育てあげてやるぞ。だから、この程度で屈服などするな。わらわを引き続き否定してくれよ。何しろわらわはそなたが認めぬ限り儚き幻想に過ぎぬのだから Oh, dang, okay, we're going. Nando me demo. This is gonna get. Kyochu, Osa Shishimas. Chano san, Kagio Tanomimas. Ona Kunari Narata to a year. Oksama are ready this. But a shiniwa Fredu Kotoga dekimasen. Hi. Shannon nodded sharply, her expression filled with a sense of duty. George, Goda, and Shannon had broken a suitable window and were inside the chapel. Since they really hadn't wanted to break one, they searched for another way in, just in case. But in the end, after proving once again that there was nowhere they could slip through, it only became more obvious that this chapel was a mysterious closed room. Inside the chapel, time had stopped ever since the last time they'd left it. Even George wasn't able to approach that gruesome Halloween party again. It was only natural. It reminded him again of the sadness of losing both parents at once. And Gota, thinking of the possibility that those corpses might have changed in some horrible way now that half a day had passed, didn't want to let George get near them. Shannon followed Gota's instructions and approached party. I am thoroughly impressed with Gota this chapter. Normally, Shannon might have resented having another dirty job forced on her, but now she truly understands Gota's mental state. Even though Gota had prodigious skill, he had gotten dragged into trouble, losing his job, and ended up left out on the streets before Natsui gave him new life. Though it had、uh, been just a casual employment decision for Natsui, Gota must have th- thought it as a turning point in his fate. Those around Gota could see that he felt a special kind of loyalty to Natsui. So he probably didn't want to lose that feeling even after her death. I actually like Natsui a lot. 
Ugh. Now that half a day have passed, the bodies of Natsui and the rest of the had changed completely. Gross. Ew. Small bugs sniffing out the smell of death had started to gather. It really wasn't something you wanted to look at directly. <laughs> because of her long experience as a servant, Shannon had an idea of which pocket Natsui kept uh, the key to her room in. It would probably be this pocket. Her guess didn't fail her. Just by touching the outside of the pocket, she was immediately able to feel it. Look at Shannon. Shannon held the key up high, showing the others that it had been found. As George would go to watch her, their eyes opened wide. That wasn't the expression Shannon was expecting, so it startled her. Oh, shoot. Guys, this isn't good. After all, Shannon hadn't noticed. If Shannon gets killed here, I'm going to be so pissed. George and Goto watched from afar and noticed it first. After all, when Shannon held the key up high, a blizzard of gold leaf had seeped from around the table. They were countless gold butterflies. This was the first time George had seen them, so it might have looked like some kind of illusion. But Goto already knew. He knew that those gold butterflies were far from beautiful, and they would bring some kind of misfortune. And that the gold swelled, trying to suck Shannon in. Shannon-san! Yeah, you better get the hell out of there. Run! Let's go! Shannon also realized that the gold butterflies were trying to swallow her up. She ran unsteadily, her expression still shocked. As she did, the gold butterflies danced all around her at once. They grouped together. They tried to swallow her up. Oh. George and Goto rushed up to Shannon, driving the cloud of butterflies. And while the butterflies were scattered, they ran towards a broken window. However, they needed to get good footing to get out of the window, which was surrounded by shards of broken glass. When they entered, they hadn't been enough time to prepare that. But now there was none. Go! There's a serial murderer around, and you guys didn't plan your escape plan. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come on, karate kick it, son. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Goto took off his jacket, swinging it around, and scattered the group of butterflies. But saying he was out in Avru would be a real un underestimate. It was doubtful that he even brought them a short amount of time. George struggled with a broken handle. Its age showed, and it didn't turn well. I can't leave it to a strength. It needs to be the right angle, and there's some trick to it. George-sama! At that moment, Goda saw it. He was seen by it. In other words, their eyes met. Uh-oh. On top of the party table. No, with the stained glass behind it, floating, laughing, was a figure of the witch. He saw the figure of the laughing witch in the center of the golden world when, with the gold butterflies about, fluttering about the, at the ready. Be it should have been Goda's first meeting with her, but he knew at her at a glance. Just like the other servants had said, this was certainly, certainly the witch of the portrait herself. Uh, this is not good. Uh... Can she please kill Rosa instead? Oh! Oh, I got out! Get, get the hell out of there! Oh, 
Oh, now the music's coming in. Let's get it. <laughs> oh shit. The golden whirlwind that wrapped around the witch burst. It was like an evil hand that literally spread its fingers and was trying to attack them. The cloud of gold butterflies attacked with a fluttering sound. Yep. Get the hell out of there! George's voice brought Shannon and Gota back to their senses. Standing there now would make them like frogs staring down, getting stared down by a snake. They had to resist. They had to fight this incarnation of this new brutal and frightening order in which Rokujima had been enveloped. Yeah, but there was no time to take out their umbrellas. The th yeah, of course. The three of them dashed out into the pouring rain. The three of them never realized this because they didn't turn around, but the gold butterflies apparently couldn't handle the rain too well. Really? That's actually kind of surprising. And this hampered their ability to chase after the humans. Huh. The three people ran uh, from their golden pursuers and flew into the mansion. <laughs> Beatrice is having a grand old time. They unlocked the door and dashed into the room. A bit of scent from Natsui's favorite gentle incense remained there. However, there is no time to let that calm them now. Yeah. Well, I hope she only has one. Bro, a story you heard? Yeah, well, that's where I would check too. Shannon's womanly sensibilities led her to conclude that. But next to the bed there was only an incense burner and a half red novel and glasses. Well, I guess I was wrong then. However, the dresser was elegant and had many drawers and it would be understandable if she kept some of her valuables there. I don't think she's going to care if you go through her thongs right now. Uh, he began to violently open each one of the drawers. He had to hurry. He couldn't actually hear footsteps, but he had the feeling that the witch was approaching. He had the feeling that her laugh was approaching. He emptied the drawers one by one and examined their contents. Every small box for makeup looked like a treasure box. And the amount of effort uh, it would take to inspect all of them made him feel a little dizzy. Good lord. Oh, you mean the gold one? Yeah, that's a good idea. At a glance, it looked like a slightly larger than a music box. When shaken, it rustled with various small objects that were inside. But it, looked, but it was locked and couldn't, didn't open. Oh yeah, the key doesn't work to this. Can't you break? Oh. Wait. Oh, Goto looked all over the room trying to see if there's some tool that he could use. Then he noticed the door which had been left- Oh! He left it open? <laughs> Since they'd entered. <laughs> he approached the door to close it and saw an abominable shadows of people approaching from beyond the darkness in the hall. No, it wasn't shadows of people. Because they weren't human at all. Josie-sama! Goto's voice trailed off. It was a shock of seeing the procession of not of this world. He was a servant, so he knew all the servants working for the Usharomiya family, but he didn't know about these. However, these were definitely servants, and not servants working for the Usharomiya Kinzo or Usharomiya Kraus. Oh gosh. Yo! These new servants were <laughs> who worked for the new master of the mansion, the Golden Witch Beatrice had goat heads and bright red uh, boiled eyes of lava. Okay, three is a bit much. Um, even though they're like, oh Jesus. Yeah, this is not looking good. As the new master laughed loudly and trimmed the di directed the six, six of the new servants, he saw them approach piercing the darkness as they came. Of course, 
She was clad in golden butterflies that were her symbol. Go to her, leave close the door and locked it. However, just as he locked it, it returned to normal. Just as though spr it sprung or something had knocked it back. Oh, Jesus. Yo, they cannot get a break. It gave the illusion that some prankster beyond the door was unlocking it every time he locked it. They couldn't have reached the other side of the door yet. So who was doing it and how? Magic, probably. It almost felt like playing with a broken toy. Click boing. <laughs> Yo, this fool's about to get yeeted right here. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's not looking good right now. It was like the witch could see Goda's frantic effort through the door. Even now, the footsteps continue to approach. And when not just their footsteps, but even their breath could be heard. Goda gave up on the lock and slammed to the door, locking it using his own large body. Yo, does anyone have like a sword or something? Oh, okay, there we go. What the hell was he using? Yo, this fool is using a fountain pen? Oh my god. George took it out and once again dug into the crack under the lid of the treasure box. It looks like it's working. Uh, um, the pressure from across the drawer grew even stronger. Go to scream. This wasn't a war cry during a test of strength. He was terrified. He was simply terrified that nothing but a single wooden door was stopping him from touching something not of this world. But he was still lucky. It wasn't touching the thing directly because there they were on the other side of the door. So if he were to touch them directly, Goda's cry would surely turn in this from something brave into a pathetic, piercing scream, and therefore one that was more real. Oh Jesus! Oh God! Okay, go ahead. I couldn't believe that this what was happening. She's this is not a fair uh, situation. Couldn't believe what was happening right before his eyes. Is this the s sexy one that is creepy coming through the door? An arm was, an arm was slipping straight through the wood like it was water, as though doing this was the most natural thing in the world. And it rubbed the back of Goda's hand frequently as he tried to hold the door shut. It slid up his arm into his chest and then up to his chin. Oh, but now Goda's scream wasn't even audible anymore. He couldn't hear his sweet whispering voice from across the door. It wasn't coming from the witch, but it sounded like a young woman. However, that didn't change the fact that it came from someone not of this world. Oh, yeah. This chick. I think I've seen her. That I may be getting her mixed up with another pigtail one that's sadistic. I'm, I mean, Goda, if you have a choice, wouldn't you rather die from her than one of those weird goat things? That's how I feel. <laughs> He's screwed. Oh, Jesus. Oh man, okay. That loot arm burst, and then heard uh, they heard the sound of something jumping around the room at an incredible speed. They didn't know what it was. Incredibly fast, small like a steel, maybe a, like a beetle. When it buried itself right in the center of Goda's chest and stopped. They realized for the first time that its true form was something like a stake with a strange design on it. Goda's large body shook, bent backwards, and fell over. As it did, the door slammed open softly. Oh, the door opened softly, even though no one was pushing it. Well, this is not good. Welcoming the new master of this room. It looked almost as though the door itself had accepted her. 
I hope she doesn't have another one of those chicks, because those are not easily beatable. Oh Jesus, these guys. Well, these guys can be beaten, because Cannon beat one of them. Not very, I don't think it was very hard for Cannon either. The good attendants came one after another, six of them. Then that witch came in, and the golden butterflies came in. This room is wrapped in a blizzard of gold leaf, which fell and piled up, turning it more and more like a uh, world of gold. Yeah, this is not looking good. I think they're about to get, like, strip decimated. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does suck they didn't have sex yet, I guess, but you went in a hole, though. I don't know why. Ooh, a woman's joy. Yeah, Beatrice is not very chill. <laughs> I love Beatrice, she's so psycho. Crack! It was the sound of the lid of the treasure- Yes! The treasure box broke opening, opening up. When George turned over, accessories, charms. Very small objects that Natsui had treasured when she was a girl fell out. Mixed in with that was a pouch that stood out from the rest. He picked it up and was immediately sure. This was it. Yo, open it, son! Don't, you don't need to say anything. Oh my god. Why do you announce it? I mean, she could probably tell, but... He's screwed. All at once, the gold butterflies attacked George, who was hardly trying to move from the who was hurriedly trying to remove the contents of the pouch. The hell is this? Uh... Oh, hell yeah! At that time, a bright red flash seemed to light up the room for an instant. The red flash seemed to cut a hole in the cloud of gold butterflies raging around the room, drawing a circle with Shannon at the center. So the resulting scene looked truly divine. Almost as though a single streak of light had cut through the clouds in this world of gold. George was curled up in a ball, yeah I would be too, and tried to protect himself with a group of butterflies, didn't have a clue what was going on. Oh hell yeah, Shannon's going beast mode. Then he noticed that Shannon was standing guard in front of him, shielding him. At, at, as she glared at the witch and the rest of the series face, she had never shown him before. <laughs> Yeah, these are some baller servants. I mean, Shannon, you're right, that is messed up. Oh, Oh, she's gonna turn into him again, huh? Man, that's messed up. I hope she doesn't fall for it. When the witch is when the witch snapped her fingers, one of the six goat attendants glittered gold changed into cannon. It was definitely a sight to make one doubt their eyes. It was definitely Cannon's face. Those red eyes are creepy as hell, like an albino rat. However, in those eyes, the glint of Canyon's integrity was nowhere to be seen. They were the hazy eyes of furniture that only obeyed the orders of the witch. George couldn't understand the scene before his eyes, and he finally understood why Goda and the rest had been unable to talk about what they'd seen in the servant room. Yeah, no shit. Ah, I like that. I like how. Like Shannon standing out for everyone.
姉と遊んでやりなさい。シェンスマーナ、愛人賞。思いっきり苦悶の表情を浮かべてやるといい。<笑>シャシャッといい夢が見られるぜ、um. oh. The Shannon, Shannon, ーシャッといい But when he flew at her, it was though some kind of invisible wall had been placed in front of her. Yo, she's strong as hell. The wall repelled the imposter, leaving a bright red ripple in its surface. No, it didn't repel him, it smashed him. It knocked him back, turning him into gold dust, in a little bit scattering him. Dang, Shannon. That foolish furnisher who had taken Cannon's form and even disgraced his honor after death broke into countless gold butterflies. Then those butterflies. Turned, broke themselves into pieces, and those pieces were broken to pieces until they were no longer butterflies but a golden splash that faded away. Okay, so that's one pawn down. Yeah. Yeah, George. George. <laughs> What? So that can give her strength? Hmm. That's weird how that works. I don't understand it. But... I don't understand it. So that's gonna be. That spirit mirror can be really important in later loops then. <laughs> If it's helping Shannon this much and they haven't like gotten out the real power, the spirit mirror George Grip had a、uh, let out a divine glow,、uh, displaying a strength powerful enough not to submit to wicked forces. But that glow was no match for the witch's sinister nature. <laughs> Such a messed up way to put it. Kore da kara kagu wa kuai. Kagu ga. Kagu, kagu! Alright, chill out, girl. Atashi wa kagu ja nai. So ste. Anata wo ima wa tote mo aware ni omo. Nani? Dude, I love the attitude Shane's given Beatrice now. 千年の魔女に百年も至らぬ家具が今何と言ったかあなたはとても哀れな人ああし合う二人に未練がないわけがないでもあなたの期待するような未練はかけらほどもない語るか家具の分際で。ジョージと結ばれたくて、わらわの靴を舐めた日々を忘れてわらわにそれを語るか愛に生き、霊年を這うが人間。それを嘲笑い、見下しているつもりで、あなたはそれにはるかに劣る。私は、Dude, あなたの哀れに思う。愛し合う二人にとって、This is kind of like her loop, though, in my opinion. Yeah, 
あなたごとき邪悪が口にする資格もないほどの神聖な意味があるだから私にはすでに何の未練もないジョージさんと愛を誓い合ったその証として指輪を受け取ったそれで永遠の誓いは完了したあなたがどんな邪悪な魔法や悪意で私たちを災難だとしても電話けがさない<笑>きれいごとを詩人のように語るな愛は情欲なんだよ少女漫画見たくきれいごとばっかりで語れねえんだよ、hmm. well, well、男どもはお前の匂いに惹かれて群がるうじばえどもなんだよそんなこともその年でまだ理解できねえのかよお前は失望するぜその後ろのメガネ男のどす黒い欲望一度でも覗いちまったらがっかり愕然あぜん呆然全然ダメだぜショーノーああもういいや語るな家具がこの家具家具家具何様のつもりだよ語りやがって愛なんて結局はどきたねえお物をどう綺麗に見せようかって欺瞞なんだよそいつに気づいて人は大人になるんだろう死ねよクズ家具家具スクラップお前を汚らわしいウジ虫に変えてやるよそれでもそのメガネがお前を愛するか試してやるよグラスス guy is named George, by the way. そいつの愛のどぎたねえ現実ってやつを教えてやるよ死ねえよガラクタがてめえが愛を語るんじゃねえおぉ。OK, OK. The invisible column of light with Shannon at the center started to have a bright red ripples all over it at once. The wall did its best to withstand the unseeable malice that had tried to corrode in on them from all directions. Well, this is not good, guys. What are you doing? Are you kidding me? You're a bad guy. 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 見たくないものをベールで覆って隠してるだけなんだよまだわかんないのかよだから家具なんだよ家具 I, I hope that we learn more about Beatrice's like previous love life ほらほらほらほらほら削られてるぜカリカリコリコリガリガリゴリゴリなって薄くて情けないんだよお前のその薄っぺらな抵抗に比べたら、パルミチアーノレッチアーノの方がまだ削るのに苦労がいるぜパルミシャン。Alright. The gold windstorm that covered the room gradually began to shave the walls off the column that protected、uh, Shannon and George. The bright red ripples frantically drew a resisting pattern, but that just turned into a red wall of despair that began to wrap the two of them up. Joji san, come in, Nasai. Yahari. What does she mean? Uri de Shta. Um. Ariato. Kimi wa boku no tamini. Sore dake de uresi yo. Shit's better give me epilepsy. The round wall that had once protected them was assaulted and covered with a curve of bright red ripples that seemed to scream. And it began to suck the two of them up instead. Ah,、oh, shh. That sucks. Well, I think that's the three she needed. Joji san, o n e g a i ga. Shannon grasped George's hand behind her. So George hugged her shoulders just as strongly. Nandai. Saigo ni. Ai 
してるって聞かせてくだ。That's cute. さよ。僕は君を永遠に。Yo, what the hell, Beatrice? At least let him. S Man, that was messed up. Well, shit. After Genji Field、uh, finished his late meal, he went out to do the nighttime rounds inside the mansion. He'd eaten some reheated soup that Goda had made, along with some random leftovers from the refrigerator. Those, those were all things Goda had made himself and were, of course, delicious. He had half heartedly gone to ask Rosa and the others what they wanted to do for dinner, but he'd been yelled at by a voice telling him that the canned food they had would be good enough and the door wasn't even open for him. So, ironically, the servant Genji was able to eat more delicious meal. But why was it that Genji wasn't afraid to do the rounds all by himself, even though all those crimes had been committed and that many people had already met a brutal end? Judging by his appearance, as he carried his usual tax without a trace of fear, as though everything was normal, you might think all of the horrible events that day had been no more than a dream or an illusion. Was he taking a philosophical, philosophic view, or had he just accepted his fate? Genji must have considered it a virtue that when fate had a way to him that was unavoidable, he carried out his duty systematically until the last moment. The depths of his heart would probably remain hidden for all eternity until he spoke them, of them himself. He had returned the master key to Rosa, so, so the places he could reach were extremely limited. All he could do was walk around the hallways, checking to make sure all the windows were closed. That probably made his rounds go a lot faster than usual. Well, you better check Natsui's shit.、Hmm? What? At the sound of a reserved knock, Aunt Rosa, who had been falling into a, a doze, jumped and woke up, pointing the barrel of the gun at the door as she yelled. Dare na no! I was snapping on a sofa when the voice came back to me, brought me back to reality. そう。わかったわ確認に行きましょう死体を見ない限り私は誰も信じない<笑>うん大丈夫だよバトラーマリアといれば絶対に大丈夫 Maybe my face seemed to be darkened with anxiety Maria grasped my hand with her small hand and spoke softly trying to give me courage Alright I'm gonna stop here for right now, actually.